Greetings and salutations to you all once again. It is me, the Ravenous Specter. And this is a video that I can't believe I've never made before, but I'm making it now. And that is the fact of why PlayStation is my main platform of choice. Now, I've had a lot of talks before in the past in other videos that I've created. And I feel like I'm yelling right now, and I do apologize, but I'm really trying to get my voice out so everybody can hear it. You know, nobody's at home at the time, so I figured, well, why don't I go ahead and try to enunciate a little bit more? But anyways, the fact of the matter is, as I've talked about this before in videos in the past when it came to dealing with PlayStation and whatnot, but I've never really sat down to try to give my whole thoughts behind it. It's the reason why PlayStation has really been my platform of choice, really, really made a video that was kind of dedicated to it. And honestly, PlayStation was the system that really brought me to the forefront dealing with gaming. I've been a gamer my entire life. I've had Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, so on and so forth, you know, throughout my whole tenure as, of being a gamer. But gaming never really hit home for me really solid until the first PlayStation came out. Now, this system had a buttload of different types of games that came out for it. Even the PlayStation 2 when it came out as well. Um, and a lot of exclusives also, but when I got my first PlayStation 1, it was probably a couple years, I think it was probably about maybe a year or two later, I think, after it came out, um, somewhere within between one to three years, I think, within that time frame, and when I finally got it, it was just like a whole new world opened up to me. The main genre that I went towards was RPGs because I was just so into the fact of characters and character development and battle systems and and just the overall uh, fantasy or, or science fiction behind it all, what the creators had done in the games, uh, obviously the stories and whatnot. It was that genre that really just made me excited for any time a, a new RPG had came out for the system. There was, to me, just so much more emphasis put in that genre when it came to being on PlayStation, especially for the exclusives that it had as well. There were some other game genres and things that I had gotten into when I was playing on the original PlayStation. Um, it was kind of funny because even though I was mainly going for RPGs, in a way I kind of went some for fighting games as well, which I'm not really into fighting games anymore. I kind of went along those two routes. I mean, I did get into some action-adventure games and whatnot. Definitely got, it, got into those, but I think maybe it was probably a mixture between action adventure and fighting but the main deal that I went towards always was RPGs I really loved I, I really love Legend of Dragoon I really love Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy 8 Final Fantasy 9 uh, you know I'm saying the Final Fantasies here but then again you also had the Saga Frontier series as well and why is it that we still don't have a sequel for Legend of Dragoon is beyond me because that game was amazing it really was on PS1 um, but uh, time went on, and I finally had gotten a PlayStation 2. And honestly, like, it just blew, <laughs> blew my expectations out into the stratosphere, honestly, when, when it came to PlayStation 2 and, and the, the increase in graphics and um, the CG cutscenes and whatnot. And, and, of course, dealing with RPGs as well. That was always, always, that was always my main go-to genre. Anytime a, a new PlayStation game came out, because of the fact that the original PlayStation had so many uh, exclusives to it, I was like, I really want to see what's going to happen with PlayStation 2 here now. The play, original PlayStation had exclusives. I'm like, I know PlayStation 2 has to have them as well. And surely enough, they did. And, I mean, you had you had Final, Fan you had, uh, Final Fantasy X. You had... Um, the Shadow Heart series as well. You have the Xeno Saga series, which I really wish that they would release on PS4, PS2 on PS4, so people wouldn't have to pay off the ashes to get a copy. I got the first two games. That's it. I'd be damned if I'm going to pay out the ass for the third one. That is not happening. <laughs> it is not freaking happening. Um, but if I would have just got them back then, you know, when they first came out, I would have felt a lot better about it, honestly. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have been paying so much, just $40 a piece as they were released along uh, their time frames or whenever they came out. But, uh, yeah, it was it was definitely a time to really be a gamer when you had a PlayStation 2. And I have a rather extensive PS2 collection. It's kind of funny because my PS1 collection isn't really that large, per se. Uh, when I was younger, it actually was. Uh, 
Yeah, there was actually kind of some uh, financial problems that had ran into me and my father at the time. You know, rest in peace, God rest his soul. Um, he um, he ran into some financial tr trouble before, and it came to a point where I actually had to have my PlayStation One be pawned so he can get money to be able to use uh, for like bills and you know food and whatnot. There was a couple times where he ended up buying it back, getting it back for me again, but there was maybe once or twice I believe that he didn't get it out and it actually got put out for on the market to, to be sold because he didn't come back to get it in whatever amount of time he had it put in for being pawned. Um, that's a whole other story. I've actually talked about it some in some previous videos of mine, but I'm not going to get into that. It was just, uh, it, it was an uh, aggravating time, honestly, and of course, you know, my games went with it too, and so really ever since it came to a point where I got out where I could start working, where I could have have my own job and have my own money and everything, I came to a point where I was going to go ahead and start building back my collection again, at least for the ones that I really wanted to get. Now, some of the games that I had were, um, nowadays, are actually rather expensive because they're rare or whatever the case may be. Like, for example, the fighting game Rival Schools. When I got that game, I actually borrowed it from a friend of mine when I was in school, and then I turned around and wanted to go ahead and get it, and I did, and I really liked it. But nowadays, you end up finding that thing from anywhere between 40 to $80, at least from what I've last seen. And honestly, especially when it comes to a fighting game, I mean, I know it's rare, but then again, when it comes to fighting games... You kind of want to find them at the cheapest possible price because, you know, fighting mechanics change over time, especially with various fighting games. So it was like, well, honestly, I probably really wouldn't have paid any more than maybe 15 at the most for it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. And I mean, I had the Star Ocean series as well on PlayStation 1. Actually, I think there was only one of them that was released on PS1, I believe, at that point in time. And, of course, that's like 20 to $40 now or something. Um, but luckily, I ended up getting it on PSP for probably half that price, maybe, maybe not half that price, maybe a little less than that, because they ended up releasing it on PSP as well. Um, but it was just a real trying time at that point in time with, with me and uh, you know my father and, and, and his deal with that. But uh, eventually, uh, it, I, I, did, I never got back a PlayStation 1 after I got a PlayStation 2 because of the fact that you could play PlayStation 1 games on the PlayStation 2. So I saw no reason for me to get one. But now I'm kind of thinking, you know what, it would be nice for me to be able to get one again for the whole nostalgia factor of having it again. I really was, I was like, man, I, I really do think that would be a really awesome idea. And I'm talking about one of those fat ones, you know, one of the, the bigger ones, not one of the smaller ones, but just, just to have one of like the original ones because that would really bring back the nostalgia factor for me because that was the one that I had when I was younger. And looking back on it, on the PS2, it was it was a righteous time. I mean, especially knowing how long that the overall lifespan was of the game. You know, that's, it's crazy. It's, <laughs> it's crazy knowing how long it lasted and how many games came out for it. But it had a lot of great titles. It really did. It, it truly did. Especially the PlayStation 1. A whole buttload of great titles. And, um, of course, then then it rolled around to the PlayStation 3. Oh, but and speaking of which, back for the uh, PlayStation 1 talk, th there was one time I actually had two PlayStations because I ended up entering a contest, a contest, contest in EGM. <laughs> And it was for Nightmare Creatures. And they and, and what it was was you would win, the grand prize would win uh, a PlayStation and five games from Activision. And um, what it was, and I couldn't even believe I ended up winning the grand prize for this. I, everybody else that probably entered this contest, I couldn't believe that I ended up winning it. And it was the, um, the question was something along the lines of Nightmare Creatures, where does it take place? Which was in London. I think it was in London. I don't know, it's been so long since I played it. I think it was a London, but it had three different choices for you to pick, and I picked that and ended up winning. And um, one of the games was that was actually Fire Pro Wrestling, which I honestly really liked, and it was si I think it was signed by, it was signed, I know it was, but I don't know if it was by the uh, one of the creators or like a director or just a guy who came up with the idea for Fire Pro Wrestling or what it was. But yeah, I mean, I had that one, and I had... Uh, Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen, and I had uh, Nightmare Creatures, and um, I honestly can't remember what the other ones were. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But um, anyways, back to the uh, PlayStation 3 as I was going into it. 
I did not get a PlayStation 3 until much later down the road. I know I hate to say this, and this might seem like blasphemy when it comes to dealing with PlayStation fans, but the price at that point in time was ridiculous. $600 was ridiculous. There was no chance that I was ever going to be paying that amount for a console, especially knowing that the PS2 wasn't even close to that price when it came out. I think it was probably, what was it, maybe $300 or $250 or something I think it was anywhere between, or maybe, I don't freaking know. I don't know. I can't think up numbers right now. Math has me having the dumb today. Um, but uh, <laughs> I ended up going the route of the Xbox 360 at that point in time. And I, because I, that was that point in time where I wanted to get into next-gen gaming at, at, that, at that point in time. And um, I had gotten into it and got to play some games that had came out specifically for that system and also with... Uh, multi-platform and whatnot, until I knew that the PS3 was at a proper price point for me. And I think I ended up getting one, actually I, actually, I still have it, as a matter of fact. It's a refurbished system, and I think I got it for maybe $320-some dollars. I think it was anywhere between $320 or $350, which to me is a lot better price for that at that point in time when the system was out than $600 freaking dollars. So, anyways, I... uh. Got that, and the first game that I got for it was Metal Gear Solid. F Shit, what number was it? Four. <laughs> I can't even remember what number it was. Yeah, it was it was Metal Gear Solid Four, and uh, I think there was one other one that I got with it. But yeah, that that was like one of the first games that I that I had started with. Of course, yeah, the game had its gameplay, but it had a lot of long ass cutscenes too. Like I felt like I was playing a game and watching a movie at the same time. But I uh, had a whole lot of great times with the PS3, and of course that was when the time when PlayStation Plus came out. Never bothered with it for a long time until I finally realized that some of the free games that they were giving out at that point in time grabbed my interest, especially an ex-friend of mine. Um, we're no longer friends anymore. That's a whole other history there. Um, yeah, and, you know, for good reason. Um, but... Uh, he, he had mentioned it to me and talked to me about it and all that. And I was like, you know what? I think I might actually check it out. Surely enough, I did. And I really liked it. And at that point in time, with PlayStation Plus on PlayStation 3, that was like something that was cool at that time. Plus, you didn't have to pay to play online, which that's one reason I don't bother with PlayStation Plus nowadays on PS4. For a certain period of time, I did. And I said, the heck with it. They're... Uh, you know, their free games that come out each month are crap, and I'm not messing with it anymore, and I'm not. And their cloud saves are faulty, and I'm not bothering with that. You know, it's just, it's it's crazy. It's it's stupid, you know. Um, so I said, well, the heck with that. You know, I it's very rarely that I ever end up doing any, anything with multiplayer anyways. And if I do do anything with multiplayer, then I'm going to end up playing on PC uh, multiplayer for that. That's that's the that's the only route that I go when it comes to multiplayer is just going to PC since it's free to play on there. But um the thing is with the PlayStation 3 is when I got into doing PS Plus, I really like I was always excited to see what new games were going to be coming out with it from month to month and so forth. And they had some great ones that came out. They had some AAA titles that came out. They had some really cool stuff. Nowadays, it's just a bunch of crappy indie titles that nobody really cares about. Or I remember one month, this when I still had it on PS4, they had all it was was like a sports game or something that like, that was like their AAA title. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? It, anyways, but I, I don't know. I think, honestly, what it was, and I know what it was at that point in time, when you got PlayStation Plus for PlayStation 3, all it was was it was an incentive, basically. It's like, Hey, do, would you like this uh, service that we're offering you? And basically, that's what it was. And they're like, yeah, you know, give us the free games, and you know. And then I think that's when they started also come out with cloud saves as well, and and exclusive exclusive deals and and discounts and all this other stuff. And you know, nowadays even seeing the discounts, it's not really that much. It's like depending on what you want to get on PlayStation Network, it's just like it's just maybe a couple dollars off, few dollars off, whatever the case may be. And to me, that just doesn't add up, especially when they ended up increasing the price for PlayStation Plus as well by $10. It was nowhere near worth it. On PS3, it really seemed like it was for the entire year. It seemed like every month they ended up having something awesome that came out. It was great. It was wonderful. Um, but And I was trying to take advantage of it as much as I possibly could. 
But then when it came to around to PS4, they started to have some good games that were coming out for it, and then they just went straight downhill. Well, that means I cut off ever having anything to do with it and saving my money. I'll save my $50, $60, whatever it is, to put towards a new game that I would like to play kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I got into a little bit of multiplayer stuff when I still had it on PS4, and I, you know... I really hate that. I really hate that about with PlayStation 4. You know, it was free to play on PS3, but it's not free to play on PS4. And I think maybe at that point in time, they were really trying to compete with Microsoft, obviously. It's like, oh, well, Microsoft has you pay to play online. Well, we're going to have it for free. But now they're turning it around now, and now you have to pay to play online. You know, I mean, I just give the big middle finger every single time <laughs> I end up seeing that PlayStation Plus thing pop up. Uh, you know, that's just that's just, just a, a pet a little pet peeve of mine when it comes to dealing with that, uh, with uh, with PS4. But besides that, besides the whole PlayStation fiasco dealing with, with the PlayStation, the whole PlayStation Plus fiasco dealing with that, and now we're on to the PS4. Really, really am liking the PS4. Great to see that there's exclusive titles coming out for it. Love everything that they've been doing with the system besides PlayStation Plus. Like like everything that's going on, like the the custom wallpapers, the cut the the uh, cover photos, the external hard drives now, which I think is something they should have came out with as soon as they released the system. Just a whole lot of great stuff that's going on with the system that I really like, and system stability updates and all that. Really, really am liking it for sure. But um, the uh, but besides that, I know that's like the the shortest amount of time that I'm talking about that system specifically because of the fact that well, it's just a still ongoing system. But um, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about the Vita and the PSP as well. The PSP, I, I don't know when I actually got it, but I finally got one, and I was using it for a certain period of time, and for some reason I turned around and sold it, and then I turned around and got a PSP again, but it was like the thinner, skinnier version. I, I forgot what it was called, the, the, the PlayStation Plus Slim or whatever, and I uh, was really glad that I got it again because then I started to realize that there was a lot more exclusives that was coming out for it than I thought that there was. And I went ahead and, gra and got pr quite a good amount of PSP games as well. Got them at really good prices and whatnot. And I um, was glad that I finally got a PSP again. Truly was. And uh, ha had a, a, a lot of fun with that. And handheld's never really been my thing per se. I'll do it every now and then, like especially with my 3DS or whatever, but that's on the video for that. But like with my Vita, for example, um, I'm really glad that they ended up releasing the PlayStation TV for the Vita, so you can actually play Vita games on your TV. I ended up getting that as well, like at a really discounted price. Got that. But the only thing that sucks is there's certain ones you can't play on there because some of them utilize the whole touch screen and back touch pad thingy. Um, that sucks. But then again, it doesn't bother me because it kind it sucks. But yeah, the Vita is pretty much dead in the water. Um, but the main thing that I was going to end up using on the Vita anyways when it came to dealing with uh, playing it on TV was RPGs, pretty much, you know, or any other games that didn't require the touch thingies. Uh, but, yeah, so glad I also had got a Vita. I had my, uh, my ex-friend at the time. He he really was was into the Vita and was, would talk to, me about, talk to me about it a whole lot, and I never really got into it. But then when I realized there were some games that started to come out specifically for that system, I was like, you know what? I think it might be time for me to go ahead and take the plunge. And honestly, I was, I was glad that I did. The Vita is an, an, is an extraordinary handheld. The only thing that sucks is the fact that it just has such a short lifespan. And I really do think that if, it, if there was some way, I don't know if it was Sony, the way they were marketing it or what it was, but if there was some way that they could really just blow it out of the park to really make it look like it was something extremely special, then I think it would still be having life for it. It would still be going on. It would still be selling more units and whatnot, which is a sad day. It's a very sad day dealing with that. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, I think that's probably pretty much all I got to say dealing with my whole deal with PlayStation. And uh, honestly, yeah, I'm mainly a console guy. I only go to PC dealing with multiplayer for the most part. But just the fact of being able to hold that PlayStation controller in your hand and just just the exclusives that the systems have had through, throughout the years is just, it's, it's a great thing. Exclusives are one of the things that sell a system. If you don't have something special about your system, then it's not going to sell. Wink, wink, Microsoft. You know what the definition of exclusives are? Anyways, that's another reason why I sold my Xbox One because of the exclusive situation. I don't not dealing with it anymore. Um, but 
Yeah, that, that's like one of the main things that is going to pull people towards your product is if you have these exclusives. You have these things that people are like, I can only play this on this specific system. This is the reason that I want to buy it. This is the reason that I want to have it. And PlayStation was that system for me. That It was that system that it had those exclusives. And honestly, um, Nintendo was next in line because they had uh, quite a bit of, of exclusives as well that I was into also. Um, especially with this handhelds and its uh, consoles as well, especially on N64 and, and GameCube and so on and so forth. But PlayStation was that system that was just like, man, they got a lot of great titles for this thing, a whole lot of greatness going on here. And I told myself every single time, especially back from the PlayStation 1, I always told myself, I'm so excited to see what's going to be coming out next for this system. You know, from the PS1 to the PS2, the PS3, and up now to the PS4. Always excited to see what new exclusives were coming for it. And one of the cool things about, especially the PS3 and the PS4 nowadays, is the trophy deal. I'm not a trophy whore by any means. I don't, I don't collect trophies. I don't do anything like that. But I will make sure on my first playthrough of a game that uh, I'll aim to do anything and everything that I possibly can to unlock whatever I can. Currently, the, the making of this video, I'm a little ways into level 19 on my trophy uh, list. I'm a level 19 trophy thing, dude, hunter, person, something. <laughs> a little ways into level 19. I've seen some trophy levels that were like 28 and 32 and whatnot. I'm like, damn! <laughs> you know, I was just like, holy freaking crap. But, um, Anyways, yeah, that, that's another thing that I thought was really great, especially about the PS3 and the PS4 was the whole trophy situation. And you could share them on Facebook. You could talk it over with other people. And some people are like, well, I just think it's stupid. I don't know why this is. A big you know, but the thing is, is that trophies, just like achievements with X Xbox, <laughs> Australian accent coming, Xbox or whatever. Um, the, uh, the thing about that is just like it was in the arcades in the 90s. If you ended up getting a high score, even at home on, on consoles where you would get high scores in games or you would you would get a secret character or you would uh, uh, get certain points or get certain items or secret items or secret weapons or secret armor sets or just whatever, secret, 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 secret everything. You know, it, it's just like it's showing, if, the, if it's in the trophy list, it's showing you that. It's showing you that you've achieved these things and you got these things, that you have these things. You know, just like it was in the arcades, just like it was at home, that's what it is. That's that's the way that it is with the whole trophy situation. You know, you don't have to like it. You don't have to understand it, but that's that's what it's there for. To me, it's like bringing that, that stuff from the 90s and early 2000s from what we kind of become accustomed to of things we've been achieving to be able to talk with other people, show with other people, and give them tips and tricks and things like that. That's what it, that's what it means to me. That, that's how I've always felt for it to be. And honestly, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future when it boils down to, to, to trophies, hoping that Sony will actually go and maybe make where you could trade in some of your trophies to get different prizes and whatnot. For example, like with GameStop. Like when GameStop goes and has these power-up reward point, point bullshit things that you can get to get stuff that doesn't even interest me in the slightest. You know, there's a couple little things that might pop up every now and then, but 90% of the stuff that they end up showing on there for you to get for free with your power up the rewards card doesn't interest me in the slightest. But um, the thing is, is that uh, that would be great if Sony could do that. I think at one point they did have something like that. I think it was. I don't really ne I'm not necessarily sure what it was with that. I remember something like a, what was it, a few years ago or something with that. I can't remember what it was. It was something dealing with trophies. Something about, and I think it was only for platinum trophies or something like that. I'm like, really, dude? Just platinum trophies? I've got two platinum trophies and I'm level 19. I don't go and try to complete everything in a game. You know, just, I don't know. But anyways, that's enough rambling for me right now. I just want to go ahead and kind of give my whole history of dealing with PlayStation from the PS1 all the way up to the PS4 and just that first day that I found out about the original PlayStation, one of my friends had it, and I went over and played it. We played Destruction Derby and Battle Arena Toshinden. Battle Arena Toshinden! And played Destruction Derby, and it was a great time. And my eyes melted out of my face. And I was like, this is amazing. I have to have this. And when I did, it just took off from there. And it's been my platform of choice ever since the PS1. 
So, anyways, I will go ahead and end this like I always do. Later, taters. There's the button. I got to press it to stop the video. Peace.